In this lecture, we will study the isomorphism theorems for groups. First, let's do some review. Consider the following definition. Let G with the binary operation star and gamma with the binary operation diamond be groups with identity elements one sub G and one sub gamma respectively. We'll define a group homomorphism phi from G to gamma as a well-defined map such that phi of x star y is equal to phi of x diamond phi of y for all little x and little y in capital G. We'll define the image of phi to be the subset of elements little a in gamma such that little a is equal to c of g for some little g in capital G. We'll define the kernel of c as the subset of elements little g in capital G such that c of little g is equal to the identity element in gamma. Then we have the following proposition. Let phi from G to gamma be a group homomorphism. First, phi of G to the n is equal to phi of G to the nth power for all n in the integer C. Second, the kernel of phi is a subgroup of G. Last, the image of phi is a subgroup of gamma. For the next definition, again, we'll have C from G to gamma, a group homomorphism. Then, for any little a in gamma, let's denote the inverse image of little a as the set x sub a, which is the set of little g in capital G, such that C of little g is equal to little a. Or we'll write this as C inverse of the set containing little a. We will also call this the fiber of C over little a. Let's denote the set G bar, which is the collection of the x sub a's for a in gamma, as the collection of fibers of C. Then we have the following proposition. Consider two groups G with binary operation star, and gamma with binary operation diamond. Let phi from G to gamma be a group homomorphism and K be the kernel of phi. Then we have if uh, X, we have that X sub A is equal to G star K is equal to K star little g for any little g in G with C of G equal to little a. Second, we have that G bar is a partition of the group G. Third, we have that a composition on the set G bar forms a binary operation. So a composition takes a pair, G bar, comma, G bar, and maps it to G bar as follows. So if we take a fiber of C over A and a fiber of C over B, let's map that to the fiber above the element little a diamond little b. So together, this uh, set G bar along with this composition as defined in number three form a group. Then we have the following proposition. Let G with operation star be a group and K be a subgroup of G. Then the following statements are equivalent. One, there exists a group homomorphism, D from G to gamma, such that K is equal to the kernel of C. Second, G star K is equal to K star G for all little g in capital G. So this says that the left and right cosets are the same. 
third, we say that the normalizer of k in G, or n sub G of k, is equal to all of the group G. And fourth, we have that G star k star G inverse lands back in k for all little g in capital G. So let's make a definition to describe any one of these equivalent statements. We will call such a subgroup a normal subgroup. So let G with star be a group. Any subgroup of G satisfying any of the equivalent statements is called a normal subgroup. And in this case, we will write K is normal subgroup using this symbol. Next, let's discuss some concepts revolving around isomorphisms and automorphisms. First, we'll start with some definitions. Say that G with operation star and gamma with operation diamond are two groups. We say that a well-defined map B from G to gamma is a group homomorphism. Again, if it preserves the group operations, i.e. phi of little x star little y is equal to phi of little x diamond phi of little y. The set of group homomorphisms from G to gamma is denoted by HOM from G to gamma. We say that a group homomorphism is an isomorphism if B is a bimorphism, i.e. a bijection. If B from G to gamma is an isomorphism, we say that G and gamma are isomorphic and write G is isomorphic to gamma using this symbol. Similarly, a group homomorphism phi from G to itself is called an endomorphism. An isomorphism in this case is called an automorphism. We denote these sets by end of G, which is the same as HOM from G to G, and by OT of G, respectively. Here is a diagram illustrating the group homomorphism property. So let's take an element in G cross G, such as a pair little x comma little y. On one hand, we can map across this diagram by going over the top and down the right-hand side of the diagram. So if we do that with our element little x little y, Mapping across the top, we'll get to little x star little y, and then applying our homomorphism phi, uh, we'll go down the right-hand side of this map, and we'll get to phi of little x star little y. Now let's consider going along the diagram by going down the left-hand side of the diagram and across the bottom. So we take our element little x little y in g cross g, and we'll map that to gamma cross gamma by applying phi to each coordinate. So we'll get the pair phi of little x comma phi of little y. Now mapping this along the bottom to gamma, we'll use the map, the binary operation diamond. So phi of little x, phi of little y maps to phi of little x, diamond phi of little y. And because our map C is a group homomorphism, we see that these two maps are equal to each other. So whether we go um, along the top and then down the right is the same as if we go down the left and across the bottom. Okay. Next proposition will take three different groups. So G with operation star, H with operation diamond, and K with operation dot. Then if B is a homomorphism from G to H, and Psi is a homomorphism from H to K, we can consider the composition Psi composed with B. 
And this is a homomorphism from G to K. Second, the automorphisms of the group G with composition form a group. Let's consider an example. So let's take our group G and our operation to be the real numbers under addition. And our group gamma with operation diamond to be R star with operation multiplication. So R star here will mean the set of real numbers minus the zero, number zero. Uh, so this is the collection of non-zero real numbers. A group homomorphism phi from G to gamma is the exponential map. V of x is equal to e to the x. So let's see the group homomorphism property in action for this homomorphism e to the x. So if we take C of x little x star little y, by definition of our homomorphism, we exponentiate. Uh, first, because star is addition, we see that uh, x star y is the same as x plus y. And so in, once we apply the homomorphism to x plus y, we'll get e to the x plus y. We know that this is the same thing as e to the x times e to the y. Now we can use the operations in uh, group gamma to rewrite this. So uh, e to the x, notice, is phi of x, e to the y is phi of y, and multiplication is the operation diamond, uh, the binary operation in the group gamma. So we see that phi of x star y really is equal to phi of x diamond phi of y for this exponential map example. Okay, let's consider another example where we fix a field equal to either the real numbers or the complex numbers. Let's consider our groups to be the um, n-fold copies of our field, so f to the n with addition, and our group gamma, let's take to be the m-fold copies of our field, f, so f to the m with addition. These are vector spaces over f, and they're both abelian groups. So let's consider some of our definitions in this context. For example, Homs from G to gamma here are the same thing as the M by N matrices over F. Here, the endomorphisms of G or the homomorphisms from G to G are the N by N matrices over F. So the collection of N by N square matrices. And here, the automorphisms of G are the general linear group, GLN of F. So these are the collection of invertible n by n matrices. 